Hello everyone, welcome to Modex 3D tips and tutorial video. I'm Zhang Ling from Modex 3D EA and EA team. Today I would like to present how to use our new interface studio to create a BLM mesh and run the simulation. Okay, first, what is the studio? It's a brand new interface, contains both pre-processing tool and post-processing tool, which means we are able to create a model, mesh, run a simulation and check the result in just one interface. So let's show, let's see how to use it. And first we need to create a folder for it. Let's click new to create a folder and we can give the name and the location for this folder. An idea in the studio is quite simple. We just go through all the click from the left to the right and the simulation could be done so we move to the, the next icon uh, it's modules we can decide what kind of module we're going to use but in current versions we only support injection mod modding so we will leave it just injection modding and move to the next one import geometry so simple click and we can choose the right cat file and it could be uh, step, IGS, STL, or some other popular CAD file for me like CATIA, uh, Parasolid, or others. And now we can see the part was already import. And if we see the part like this color, the gray color, which means it doesn't have the right attribute yet. So double click to give the right attribute. And this one is part. And now we have part in the window, so we can move to the next step, create a runner system, and click this one. We are able to find what is the, the, the gate we're going to use for this one. Uh, I would like to use the pin gate. Okay, simple click, the gate will be added on the surface of the cavity. And in this page, we are able to change the diameter for the gate, and I will leave leave it as default for this demo and we can move we can keep at the next one at the next gate if we want but uh, this is just one gate design so I will leave this page move to the next icon runner click it let the program create the runner system and in this page we are able to decide where is the padding direction and next page we can decide the dimension for the runner systems and also the, the lens for it. Now we have uh, the runner system already, so we can move to the next step, cooling channel and the mole base. First, we need to create a mole base. Click this one. And we can give the size for the mole base in this page. If everything's fine, we can just leave it and uh, click next icon cooling channel and in here we are able to decide the direction of the cooling channels uh, numbers of the cooling channel and also the distance between the cooling channels okay and next page we can decide if we're going to connect those channels by using horse or channel but I will leave it as default this time and now we have the cooling channel and we move to the next icon add inlay and outlet click it and uh, the program will add inlay and outlet if everything is fine we can just leave this page and check our cooling channel systems if there's a uh, intersection issues or the cooling tuner are too close to the part or runner you will pop out the warning message or error message and in this case everything is fine so we can see it's okay here 
so we can move to the next step create a mesh and in in this icon we are able to decide what kind of mesh type we're going to use it could be eDesign or BOM which we call solid here and before we create the mesh by using this generation we must to know what is appropriate mesh size for this part let's hide the other item first so we can switch to this page and we can do the show high function to show high the runner cooling channels uh, inlay outlet and of course the part but we need to leave the, the part in the windows and we do the no seating decide what is the, the mesh size for this cavity okay and here the program will give us a default mesh size which it means twice of the average thickness so when I see this 1.6 I already know the average thickness of this part is 0.8 to 0.9 roughly and I recommend to use average thickness for the normal case so I will use just point A for the no seeding and if it's a huge part like bumpers the size is more than 500 millimeters I recommend just use the default to do the no seeding and after I click apply we can see there's a lot for black note on the feature line which the distance between two nodes represent the size the age of uh, the surface mesh and of course we can change it when we select the, the, the feature line like the feature line here and the segment of this feature line is 3 and of course we can change it to, to 6 then the mesh size will be decreased so we will have a more mesh element along this feature line but I would like to keep it as a default for this demo so I will change back to 3 and if everything is fine and I will just leave this no seeding page and click generate and click generate there's a, a workflow showing in this page the program will generate a surface mesh first for the cavity and then generate a solid mesh for the part for the runner and then generate a static mesh for the cooling channel and more base and user are able to decide which step we can do for example if I pin here the program will only generate a surface mesh and solid mesh for the part and it stopped here and we can check if everything is fine if, and if everything is fine we can go to keep going down to finish them one by one so first I will just generate the surface mesh just in case there is some defect on the surface mesh if there is a, a critical defect on the surface mesh the program will stop it and uh, pop out the one message as user to fix the defect on the surface mesh first and then after we clean all the defect and we are able to go down to finish the others process and in here we can go to this this one and it shows the the quality table for this surface mesh which we don't see any critical problems here which means we are able to generate a solid mesh for the part so let's click the generate again now we already have a surface mesh and the quality is nice so we can just directly go to the the mobile base and that program to create the solid mesh for all of the items is pure automatically mesh kernel Okay, now 
all of the item is finished. So we have a solid mesh for the part, runner, cooling channel, and more base. And if we want to check what is the, the mesh looks like inside the more base inside the cavity, we can go to tool, chisel, and we can cut this mesh in half. And we can see what is uh, the mesh type we are used for the part, which is uh, three days BOM. And back to the mesh, if we are now satisfied with our three days BOM, we have a parameter here. We can change what kind of mesh type we're going to use for the part, for the parting, for the runners, and cooling channels. But I will keep it as a default here. And now we have everything, just final check, see if there's a, a bad 3D solid mesh. If there's a bad orthogonality, solid mesh, it will pop up the, the error message, which we have to fix it before we export the model. Okay, so everything looks fine, so we can continue to the next page. Now we have the mesh, so we can go to the next icon, material, and we can select it, which material we're going to use. You could directly select from here, from the user bank, or we click the material wizard to open the Modex 3D bank. And we can just choose one of them, right click, and add it to the project. And leave this page. Now we have the material for the part already. So we finish the material, we go to the next process setting. And you can see here we already have a default for the process setting, but it would be better if we click the process wizard and check what is the the setting inside. And if we are not satisfied with uh, the default setting, we can change it. So we can change the the flow profile, feeding time, injection pressure profile, VP switch point, packing time, packing profile, and also the mold temperature, the material temperature here. And uh, next page, we can set the cooling condition like more open time, cooling time, and air temperature. And also, we are able to set uh, the coolant type as water, oil, or the others. And we can decide what is uh, the flow rate for the coolant, the temperature for the coolant, and also we can decide what is uh, the more base material. And go to the summary. If everything is uh, correct, then we can just this process setting and leave the process wizard and go to the next icon, Analysis. We need to decide what kind of analysis we're going to run. It could be flow only, or flow and pack, or the full analysis of a cool, pack, cool, flow, pack, and warpage. So I will select the full analysis. And in computation parameters, we are able to decide what is uh, output, how many outputs we want. For example, I change here to five. Then we gonna have I gonna have a five time step output in flow stage, and I can add five to the packing too. So now I have a five time step output in feeding and also in packing too. And also I can change here for the cooling, make more output, so I will have a more result in different time step. Okay, once we finish the computational parameter setting, we can move to the run. Just click this run, and the project will be uploaded to the local host. Yeah, it's too fast. We don't really see anything, but it will appear here later, and we can check the, the which one is finished and which one is still waiting to be run. And after anything, everything is done here, the result will be automatically downloaded back to the folders, then we can read the result in the studio. Okay, that will be 
all for today's topic. In this video, we know how to use Studio to create the model, mesh, and run the simulations. If you have uh, further questions, please feel free to send an email to support.u at modxvd.com. We are happy to answer it. Hope to see you next time.